The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in comparison to the previous tape, in continuing of the discourse of it, what great reward it would be for us to be a faithful steward of God. When we are faithful in little things, Lord will make us to be faithful in greater things. The same passage given to Ezekiel chapter 7, chapter 3. In verse 27 he has been told, When I speak, you will open thy mouth. And you will tell to this people, if they hear, let them hear, and if they forbear, let them forbear, for they are rebellious one. The word of the Lord demands that the pastor teacher should take responsibility in properly dividing the truth with accurate isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word through the proper dispensing technique of dispensation. And if this proper dispensing technique of dispensation is not been taught, not been learned, not been made known, then the pastor teacher doesn't know what is the importance of exegesis. The pastor teacher doesn't know the polytheism of privileges to be taught to the hearers. The pastor teacher doesn't know exactly what is this great unique spiritual life in the mystery doctrine of the churches given for us to go through the three other stages of the spiritual life, followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by ending up in spiritual maturity. The great reality of the word which has been given for them if it has not been properly explained, if it has not been properly thought, if it has not been properly made known, then the ignorance will lead them to involve themselves in softies. The softies of the fear of fellow ostracism. The softies of the fear of this ecclesiastical displeasure. If I tell the truth, the people will be worried. That's what they may think. And on the other hand, he's having the softer of his own fear that the income will be cut off. How many of the ministers can tell truly, if they have been born to one parent, that they are rightly dividing the word of truth? that they are not showing the fakery, that they are not moving up with hypocritical trends, the evil imaginations of their heart towards the congregations where they have been kept. How many of the people can really tell in my country like India who have been taken the foreign support to support the denominations and are they really doing their work, the work which I can note particularly into the Church of Christ of Andhra Pradesh, where the people spend a lot of time speculating and thinking the one who has been baptized once again give baptism, fakery of the certificates, fakery of the colony names, telling that we went there to service, we went here for evangelism. Does your heart satisfy you when you eat that food? Can your conscience be clear that your hands are pure and you have done that food with labor? A laborer is worthy for his hire, said the doctrine. If it doesn't match to the reality of the word, how can that laborer eat that food? How can we work into the kingdom of God and eat the unrighteous food by the fakery of fake certificates, by the fakery of our lives, by telling that I'm here to feed my children, to my family, to my belly, so I need to do these things. If not, I will not get the money. It's very wrong. Do faithfully the work of the Lord, and the Lord will reward you in such kind of a manner, you will never want anything. And it's a great desire of the Lord in feeding us in such kind of a great reward. When you take it, if it is really matching the things put into Christ, it is an absolute great reward. If you ignore matching the things put into Christ, then it is no reward, it is a curse. Because Satan is the origin of all these things. Have you not known John 8.44, the evil from where it comes? Evil possesses your soul, but not the devil. There is no demon possession for a believer. 
the evil of this world which has been possessed in the minds of these people have caused not to know really the word of the Lord and just throw it off as useless and worthless things, the word of the Lord. That's why their hearts have become hardened. That's why they have become stiff-necked. That's why they know they don't have fear for Jehovah at any manner. Where is the true love to the Lord? Can anyone tell where absolutely that they are faithfully working to the kingdom of God? Not having any bestowed interest. We know very well they organize crusades for money. They organize legalism trends for money. They raise doubt about one's national security. Isn't it a great shame on our part that we call Christians and we don't walk in Christianity? Everyone wants to have the same resurrection body, whether you love it or not, every believer has it. But the same character and the possession of Christ, what he had, reverence towards Bible doctrine, reverence towards each and everything, towards the plan and work, with purity and honesty, what it has been given to him, and he has executed it. Why can't we look upon that? Why can't we look upon our work and get back to that reality of the world? We don't want the other part, but we want the resurrection body. What he will fit into that resurrection body? Why was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ honored above everything, honored above every name? Not for him being in half mature or half perfection or half hearted will, but he was perfectly involved into that will through perfection and completion and maturity to do God's will perfectly and execute it no matter what it is. He said it was a joy for me to go to the cross. What is a joy for you today? If you are a pastor teacher, rightly dividing the word of truth should be your joy. There can be no greater pleasure for us than to inculcate into the Bible doctrine, into the minds of the hearers. First, we should need to inculcate to our soul, learn from the Master's feet. In my case, the Lord got the Holy Spirit and the guiding me to take Robert Bunker Thieme as my human mentor. That is what he's the only one master I count. Likewise, even you will have your master. Your pastor teacher is your master. You need to strictly follow your pastor, your master. And you need to grow up. His work is to inculcate for you. And he needs to inculcate for you next Jesus and dispensing technical dispensations. No other method will help it out. But greater men of the people today have become greatly involved. self-indulgence of Christian immoral degeneracy and self-righteousness of Christian moral degeneracy. That's why they have become a great liars for the truth. The truth has been perished, faithfulness has been ended, purely because they have lost the importance of that. Right? And that is our failure in realizing the simple truth. It will cause a great failure for them to be for the truth. And that is what it is a great burden on our shoulders. Dear brother, the duty of the master teacher is to preach the word faithfully. Just like you trusted in it. And if you're not doing it, you should be answerable to God. So which way you go, we shall continue in the next day. Father, I'm grateful for the future of the world. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit will not let us in the negative of the world.